in Council today is Wednesday, October 24th, and I call the meeting to order. The first order of business is the approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion. Second. Second. Move approval. Any discussion? Mr. Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Next order of business is the approval of the minutes from our October 10th meeting. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Um, at this point in the meeting, members of the public who wish to address the council on matters not on the agenda may do so, but I just ask you to please limit your comments to three minutes. Do we have anyone signed up? No one signed up, and, and I don't see anyone <coughs> to address the council, so we'll move forward then to the, um, to the, the business item, a joint report um, from the Standing Committees of um, Management, Community, Development, Environment, and Transportation Committees. Councilmember Chavez. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is uh, business item 2018-237, the Unified Budget Amendment. This amendment includes proposed changes to the operating and capital component of the unified budget. There are two proposed changes to the operating component. In community development, the HRA pass-through expense budget is increasing by $900,000 due to higher than expected rent subsidies in 2018. This will allow the HRA to continue at current service levels while developing long-range funding strategies. This is funded with reserves. In Metropolitan Transportation Services, the Metro Mobility budget is being amended to use $4.6 million in reserves due to higher than expected ridership and lower than anticipated average fare collections. Both programs will continue to meet minimum reserve targets. The capital component is being amended as presented on October 10. It closes out over $120 million in completed projects and brings $240 million into the authorized capital program. Some projects of note are the fourth incinerator at the Metro plant, a Metro water reclamation facility in Rosemount that will provide treated effluent for a biofuels plant, removing the $50 million component commitment by the council needed to cash flow the Southwest light rail transit project while funding agreements were completed with Hennepin County and increasing funding for the new Minneapolis bus garage, which moves this project forward for construction in 2019. The amendment was reviewed and approved by the Transportation, Environment, Community Development, and Management Committees. The motion is that the Metropolitan Council authorizes the 2018 unified budget as indicated and in accordance with the tables in the, <coughs> excuse me, in the staff materials. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Right, this is a roll call item. Is there any discussion on it before we call the roll? Seeing none, Emily, please call the roll. Rodriguez? Aye. Schreiber? Schreiber. Aye. <laughs> Munt? Aye. Barber? Aye. Elkins? Aye. Dorfman? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Latofsky? Reynoso? Aye. McCarthy? Aye. Rummo? Aye. Melander? Aye. Kramer? Aye. Commerce? <coughs> Chavez? Aye. Wolf? Aye. Charma? Aye. The motion is adopted. So next we have the consent agenda. Um, move, can I, can move I move approval of the consent agenda? Madam Chair, if I could, I'd like to pull uh, or at least to be uh, listed as voting uh, at uh, not voting on item number 4, 2018, uh, 260 in part because that is a meet a client. And I don't want to be, uh, even though it's not a formal conflict, I want to at least acknowledge it and not and vote absentee on that item. Or, or abstain from on that item. Okay. Okay. Can I have a second then for the consent? Second. Second. And we'll note Member Cunningham's abstention from that item. Thank you. Does that work, Council? All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Um, next, we'll have reports of the standing committees, uh, community development. Member Kramer. This is the uh, 2018 <laughs> Transit Oriented Development Award recommendations. Madam Chair, Council Members, this action is to award almost $4.5 million in livable 
Communities Demonstration Account Transit Oriented Development grant funds to support four projects in three cities. Upon completion, the projects are expected to result in more than 670 new housing units, all of which are affordable housing units, an annual tax base increase of $700,000, and over 100 new and retrained jobs, and over $100 million of leveraged private investment. Madam Chair, I move that the Met Council award four livable communities demonstration account transit-oriented development grants totaling $4,499,250 to redevelopment projects in the cities of Minneapolis, Minnetonka, and St. Paul. And I and it's authorize our community development division director to execute the grant agreements on behalf of the council. And attached to the agenda item there is a chart of the of the awards, which are for the Northwest University and Dale Corner and St. Paul and three mini, uh, two Minneapolis projects, Lake Street Apartments, and the Paris and Legends of Minnetonka. Excellent. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Member Munt. Madam Chair, I'd just like to um, <coughs> thank the city of Minnetonka. They are doing 482 units, all affordable, near the Opus light rail station, which will soon be there. And um, of those units, they are affordable to people earning between 51 and 60% AMI. And 99 of the units will be three or more bedrooms, which we have heard a huge demand for. Our housing policies have been separating families, and this will allow them to all live under one roof. It's really good work. If Minnetonka can do it, anybody can do it. Thank you. Any other comments, Member Dorf? Yes, I want to mention one in the Lynn Lake area of um, Minneapolis, sort of the uptown area, which is a really nice uh, partnership with the <coughs> local community and provides housing for homeless vets. So another great project. Excellent. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Next item, Member Kramer. Is that the back side? The Great Cloud Island Township 2040. Yes. yes. Madam Chair, Council Members, uh, this action is to authorize the 2040 Comprehensive Plan for Great Cloud Island Township, half of which is located in Council Melander's district and half of which is located in my district. <laughs> Great Cloud Island Township is located in southwestern Washington County on the shore of the Mississippi River, south of St. Paul Park and west of Cottage Grove. The MSP 2040 designates the township as rural, diversified, and forecasts minimal growth for the community through 2040. The township's plan appropriately guides land at densities and in patterns consistent with the diversified <coughs> rural community designation land use policies. Council staff determined that the township's 2040 plan conforms to regional system plans, is consistent with council policies, and is compatible with plans of adjacent, adjacent and affected <coughs> jurisdictions. Therefore, Madam Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council adopt the attached advisory comments and review record and approve the actions as outlined in the staff report before you. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. Any discussion? Can I comment? Please. Briefly, Remember just want to thank staff. I mean, you know, Great Cloud Island is a kind of a unique place uh, uh, in the region, very small, and, uh, you know, putting together a comprehensive plan is, is uh, tough for them just because of their resources and staff did a great job and uh, just appreciate all the help that they not only give this community, but 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 all. So thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Next, we'll move on to the Environment Committee. Mm -hmm. Council Member Rummel. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Members. Business Item 2015-291 SW. Same week is a request for a construction contract award for the one MN. 
310 4th Street Access Shafts and Tunnel Repair. I like the way we title things. <laughs> Interceptor 1MN310 is located approximately 85 feet below 4th Street South in downtown Minneapolis and was constructed in 1885. MCES has identified large voids above the interceptor between 1st Avenue North and Marquette Avenue and appears to be increasing as sandstone continues to slough off. Loose sandstone is being washed into the interceptor through the joints, holes and fractures as groundwater infiltrates the void. To maintain the integrity and reliability of the system, the tunnel crown requires stabilization. This will prevent loss of service and impact public health, environment, and infrastructure. Once repaired, the void will be filled. This project was expedited by MCES because, the Minneap because Minneapolis plans to reconstruct 4th Street in 2020. Therefore, I move that the Metropolitan Council authorize its regional administrator to award and execute a contract for one MN310 4th Street access shafts and tunnel repair project 807665, <coughs> contract I18P259 to PCI roads for their low responsive responsible bid of $3,929,674. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Excellent. Is there a second? second? Any discussion on this item? Member Rummel. Um, you know, as we get these uh, unusual uh, expedited projects, this one is one I think uh, reinforces our, our outcomes of collaboration. Minneapolis has a repair coming up in 2020, so we move ahead so they don't have to uh, tear up 4th Street once it's been fixed. So. I really like that we do this. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Next, we'll move on to the Management Committee. Council Member Chavez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is Business Item 2018-264, Adoption of the Equity Policy. This business item discusses the proposed equity policy, which will institutionalize the equity outcome of Thrive MSP 2040. The equity policy will establish the means to execute the Thrive MSP 2040's equity outcome by creating tools that will operationalize, operationalize equity throughout the Council's work internally and externally. This policy has been in development since early 2018. Regional administration, including the Office of Equal Opportunity, engaged the Equity Advisory Committee in the development of this policy. Policy and Procedures Steering Committee and the Office of General Counsel were consulted in this final proposal for adoption. At the October 10, 2018 Management Committee meeting, council members discussed the equity definition in the policy and the statutory verbiage definition for metropolitan area. It was referenced uh, several times in the uh, draft policy. Council members asked for an amended language to footnote one to add clarity to the reference to the metropolitan area as seven county area. Uh, just to put a little, um, embellish that a little bit, the policy draft was relying upon statutory text that is several years old, which did not necessarily adopt the concept of what you and I call the region or seven county area. And so we committee members thought it might be appropriate to have an and rather than leave it at metropolitan area, multiple references which could be misconstrued emotionally, not necessarily legally. This item was reviewed and approved unanimously by the management committee. Leslie Candaris, Enterprise Initiatives Manager, will provide a short presentation to accompany this item before we act on it. Thank you. Welcome, Leslie. Chair, council members, good afternoon. My name is Leslie Kinderis, and I work in regional administration here at the council. Uh, as council member Chavez said, I'm going to just provide a brief overview before you take action on this item. If you do end up adopting this policy today, it will become part of the broader body of council-wide policies that guide uh, this organization's work. Um, this policy is being brought to you by the Office of Equal Opportunity. Unfortunately, Cy Jordan, the director of 
Oyo is unable to attend today. She's out of the office this week, as is Yolanda Burkhardt, who is um, also works in the Office of Equal Opportunity and was really involved in the development of this policy. Um, I should also note, as Councilmember Chavez says, this policy has been under development for the vast majority of this year. And so former director Wanja Kirkpatrick and former equity manager C. Terrence Anderson also played a big role in this document. Um, and before I move on, I just want to underscore what Councilmember Chavez said too, as well, that the Equity Advisory Committee played a role in the development of this policy. They dedicated significant amounts of their January, February, and March, and September meetings to providing advice and sharing their expertise with the Office of Equal Opportunity as they worked to develop this document. So this first slide is the language that's in the equity policy that you're being asked to act on today. Uh, as you can see, the, the or let me back up, the main reason for um, bringing this policy to you is the Office of Equal Opportunity feels that this document is an important step in helping to institutionalize the equity efforts here at the council. So the exact language that would be in this policy is to the extent authorized or permitted by law, the council, the Metropolitan Council will conduct its own operations and use its assets and authorities to equitably serve the needs of the metropolitan area. And then it goes um, through several bullets to elaborate on what that would mean. Uh, also, the footnote that Councilmember Chavez mentioned that the management can be requested is uh, noted below to make sure we're talking about the seven county area. To give a little bit more context to this, um, this slide pulls from the purpose of the policy section of the policy document in front of you today. Uh, as you know, Thrive MSP 2040 is the comprehensive development guide developed under state statute. And this policy is really rooted in the council's statutory authority, specifically the charge to uh, ensure that the council is developing regional policy for the orderly and economical development of the region. So the language in here is really trying to tie back to the case made in Thrive that as the region grows and becomes more diverse, that's a tremendous opportunity for the economic vitality of this region. But if the current disparities persist, particularly the racial disparities that are among some of the, some of the largest among metropolitan areas in the nation, uh, that could potentially undercut the future economic prosperity of this region. So this policy is really meant to uh, continue along that policy direction established and thrive and take steps to ensure that as an organization, the Metropolitan Council is really operationalizing and embedding uh, the equity work and um, really putting in place the organizational pieces needed to make good on the equity commitments that are in the Thrive document. <clears throat> And this is my final slide um, on the second page of the policy. It does provide a high level structure for the implementation and the accountability of this policy. Uh, usually council policies are accompanied by procedures and I presume that those will be developed at a later date, but the policy document does point to at a high level how this policy is going to be implemented. Uh, it, prescribes roles for council divisions. Council divisions are going to carry out this policy and the policy talks about how council div divisions will use an equity lens to evaluate its operations, planning and investments. The Office of Equal Opportunity will continue to play a central role in coordinating council-wide equity initiatives. Uh, they will also work closely with divisions to ensure they have the resources and tools they need to carry out their elements of the policy. Uh, the policy also requires the Office of Equal Opportunity to do an annual review of the policy that would be shared with the Metropolitan Council and with the Equity Advisory Committee. And finally, the policy commits the council to establish an equity framework. An equity framework is defined in uh, the definition section of the policy, uh, but it's really intended to be a strategic action plan for the council's equity work, which will include the development and implementation of an equity lens. So while that equity framework has not been developed yet, um, that's a key element of this policy uh, that would be committed to should it be adopted. So with that, if there are any questions, I'm happy to try to tackle them. Member Dorfman. Thank you, Madam Chair. So I have a question. Um, we have clear language in here that we're committed to advancing equity for all state and federally defined protected classes. Mm -hmm. If the federal government were to change their definition of protected classes, as has been proposed, does that in any way um, inhibit our ability to follow through 
on, on this? Good question. Chair, uh, Councilmember Dorfman. The short answer is I don't know the exact answer to that question. I'm going to follow up with Sai to make sure we can get you a, a legally sound answer. I will say the intent in talking about protected classes in here was to ensure that we aren't leaving anybody out. Um, the way, some of the earlier iterations of the draft are naming certain groups, and I believe the Office of Equal Opportunity felt that this language would ensure that it's inclusive, whether or not it'll be flexible or whether it'll have to be amended in the future as those change. I'm entirely sure. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Member Reynoso. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I, I, as the chair of the committee, I, I, Leslie, I'd like to thank you uh, personally for, your, for the work that you played in this, uh, the, the role that you played in this, and also uh, Yolanda and Cy, uh, have been a tremendous amount of help, and I can't go without, again, yes. uh, Wanda and, and C. Terrence played a major role in it, too. But the, the conversations that took place uh, sometimes were difficult, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, we were able to put, I think, a document together that uh, I certainly support and ask my colleagues to, colleagues to do the same. Um, this, you know, sometimes we have to be intentional, we have to be bold, and, and uh, while this has both of those uh, aspects in it, I think, uh, you know, in, in the long run, we as a community, as, a, as an organization, are, are much stronger and play a better role in, the, in our community. So thank you again for the help there. Excellent. Any other comments? Member Mudd. Madam Chair, I'm, I'm really pleased by this action because decades of, dis, of disinvestment have caused the disparities that we have, our disparities in terms of home ownership, education, and wealth are among the worst in the nation. And our region is committed to narrowing those gaps. And we realize that that won't happen quickly. So this is work that the region needs to commit itself to long term. And I think this will help us embed it in our culture and in the path forward for whoever fills these seats uh, moving forward. Thank you. Other comments? I will say that I also support this item and really appreciate the, the support from the Equity Advisory Committee, the amount of time and effort that they put into helping provide feedback on this item as well as, as all of the staff time. So with that, if there's no further discussion, all those in, oh, I'm sorry, Member Chavez. It hasn't been moved yet. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll make a motion. I thought you moved it already. <laughs> I second. Any, dis any further discussion? All those in favor, so go ahead, Member Chavez. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, well, first, I wanted to also thank the staff and the Equity Advisory Committee for uh, wading into this challenging subject. The, I think if we step back for a moment, just take a breath. When we came in the door, we weren't necessary. We didn't have this in our hands. So this is something that's what I call a deliverable. And in my, it, it's difficult for me to separate my day job from this work. Uh, when I look at uh, a policy, my uh, corporate governance and co uh, corporate compliance genes kick in and start you know, dissecting, slicing and dicing the, the text. But more important is the spirit of this as far as what we're gonna do with it. So I want us, if we can at least embrace that going out the door this afternoon of what we're going to do with this policy going forward. Beyond that, I wanted to, uh, to be transparent with you as far as a couple of things to be sure you're not blindsided by some of the text in here. If you can turn to the second page on, in your materials, or the second page of the, of the draft policy, to call your attention to how the equity scope Fits. And I was just chuckling to myself listening to the question that Council Member Dorfman asked a couple of minutes ago because it's a very similar question I asked two weeks ago at the Management Committee when the lawyer DNA was kicking in where it says uh, right before, it's the last paragraph before Roman numeral four, the council is committed to advancing equity for all state and federally defined protected classes. And then it lists them. I would think that part of the answer to that question that Councilmember Dorfman raised, as long as we have them listed, that provides us a baseline rather than just list, uh, residing with a, a definition. On the other hand, an argument can be made, does that text mean that is limited 
two. So I was raising the question at the committee. We decided not to go anywhere with that. Uh, and that's for, as, as a, a term of affection, I could argue with Office of General Counsel over a, an adult beverage of their choice as to this. But I'm just saying for consideration, just so you're not blindsided by that. So that's, that's one piece that was, I think, added by the Equity Advisory Committee discussion. The other one that jumped out at me at, at, in the definition of terms, Roman numeral five, the first bullet, if you recall the discussion of equity when we were working on Thrive MSP 2040 and the whole equity chapter, the first sentence in that first bullet should be familiar to you because that should come from the spirit of the Thrive chapter on equity. The second sentence is new here and the source of that is policy link. So I wanted to be sure that you were comfortable with both of those pieces appearing here, which had not appeared in Thrive MSP 2040. I'm supportive of the policy, but I just want to be transparent. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other discussion or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Nay. The motion is adopted. Um, next <coughs> item is another management item. Council Member Chavez. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this is uh, business item 2018-266, adoption of the Thrive Indicators. Another deliverable from years ago. This business item discusses the Thrive Indicators, a remaining piece of unfinished business from our work on Thrive MSP 2040 adopted in 2014. The Thrive Indicators will assess the region's progress toward the Thrive vision and serve as a touchstone for public accountability. The Regional Growth Strategy Workgroup worked with council staff to refine this final proposal for adoption. Data on the indicators now live in a dashboard on the council's website. Council staff will upgrade the functionality of the dashboard in 2019. This item was reviewed and approved by the Management Committee. <coughs> Madam Chair, I move that the Metropolitan Council adopt the 25 indicators as shown in Table 1 in the staff materials with the resolution. Thank, thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> the motion is adopted. Next, we'll move on to transportation. Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam Chair. 2018-263 uh, deals with the procurement of 79 replacement buses and 21 expansion buses and aligns with the bus replacement schedule and capital improvement plan. All buses are scheduled to be delivered by April 2019. This procurement will use the state of Minnesota's small bus procurement contract, which allows the council to purchase from multiple vendors at a competitive price. I therefore move, Madam Chair, that the Metropolitan Council authorize the regional administrator to execute purchase agreements with one North Central bus sales for up to 53 replacement buses and seven expansion buses in an amount not to exceed $4,234,200 and Hoagland bus for up to 26 replacement buses and 14 expansions, expansion buses in an amount not to exceed $2,839,500. Thank you. Is there a second? A second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Next item, Councilmember Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam Chair. 2018-267 deals with the Transportation Policy Plan. It is required by state law to guide long-term investment in the metropolitan transportation system and federal law requires the metropolitan planning organization to update and adopt a long-range transportation policy plan at least every four years. The council and our partners started working on this update in February 2017. There was robust community engagement from the beginning and until the very end of the process. The plan is better because of it. I think all of our staff uh, that worked on the update and the council member work group that guided the process. Council members Barber, Commerce, Elkins, and McCarthy. And uh, I think it's interesting because it's just so much work in such a big document and yet the motion is very short. I therefore move, Madam Chair, that the Metropolitan Council accept the attached public comment report on the draft update to the 2040 Transportation Policy Plan and adopt the revised final update of the 2040 Transportation Policy Plan. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? 
Well, I also would like to just offer thanks to staff, all the council members and all the members of the public who commented on the plan. I think it helps uh, make the plan ultimately better for our region. Really appreciate everyone's time and effort. If there are no further comments, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Send it back to you, Council Member Rodriguez. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, if, should we like clap? It feels like you're yeah. right. It's like it's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chair, maybe we let Amy and the staff go on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was making jokes that we would send cute. send one of the chapters back for for revision, but save that for later. <laughs> Go ahead. 2018 272. On January 24th, 2018, the Metropolitan Council authorized the purchase of eight electric 60 foot buses and six charges for, the, for use on the Sea Line Bus Rapid Transit Corridor. On June 13th, 2018, the Metropolitan Council authorized execution of a memorandum of understanding with Excel Energy providing a pathway to 100% clean electricity for council accounts and supporting electrification of vehicles, including buses. As part of the partnership, Excel Energy has, provide, has proposed a pilot to advance the electrification of transit in 2018, which will include, will include providing, owning, and maintaining charging infrastructure at no cost to the Metropolitan Council. I therefore move, Madam Chair, that the Metropolitan Council authorizes the Regional Administrator to negotiate and execute the Memorandum of Understanding regarding bus electrification strategy the Metro Transit Electric Buses and Charging Infrastructure Agreement between the Metropolitan Council and Excel Energy, doing business as Northern States Power Company, and any and, and any necessary future similar charging <coughs> infrastructure agreements to provide power at additional locations or for additional electric buses. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> the motion is adopted. The last item, the final item, is other business is 2018-280, adopting the Metropolitan Council's public comment draft of the 2019 Unified Budget. Adoption of the budget comment draft establishes the basis for gathering public input. The public comment draft combines the Council's proposed operating budget and proposed capital program into one consolidated budget document and is consistent with the budget presentation to the Council and Policy Committees. So, if could I have a motion to... So moved, Madam Chair. And a uh, thank you. Is there any discussion on this? Seeing none, then all those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? The motion is adopted. Okay. So now we move on to reports. Council members, do you have any reports that you'd like to share? Well, I will share one then, if you guys. Um, I had the opportunity today to participate in the Metro Mobility Workshop, which I just really thought was very well organized. I want to thank staff for their for their efforts in organizing that event. It was so well attended. The room was packed at the Wilder uh, Foundation. Um, and it was just a tremendous opportunity for me to hear from some of our customers, our Metro Mobility customers, as well as some of the providers, and just really appreciated the opportunity to be there. Thanks. Any other reports? Member Munt. Several of us attended Railvolution, and it was really amazing. I had expected that I'd be visiting a Pittsburgh that was a rust melt city in decline. And the truth is transit and tech have um, reinvented the city into an incredible livable place. And uh, that was fun. It was also fun to see um, so many folks from Minnesota doing workshops, um, sharing our lessons learned with others from around the country. Thank you. Any others? Seeing none, then I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone aye. opposed? We're adjourned.